What is going on? Psych Perspectives, Geoflex here. This is something that we need to talk about. In the USA, we do not have a representative democracy. Case in point, your tax dollars. We don't really have much of a say, even though we're the taxpayers, on where our tax dollars are going and how they're being used. Case in point, most of us are not voting to have our tax dollars wasted to fund Israel, to fund Ukraine, to fund endless wars. Most of us are not wait are not, you know, having a say so on our tax dollars benefiting the rich and the wealthy. Meanwhile, we can't our streets and roads can't be fixed. We're driving around on potholes. Now here I am in the state of Michigan. Thankfully, under Gretch, uh, other um, ugh, under government Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist II, we're finally seeing our tax dollars be reallocated correctly, so we can get our infrastructure, our streets and roads fixed, our bridges fixed, etc. But on a federal level, we don't really have much say. So, even though on average, your average American working person is losing anywhere between 20 to 25% of their income in taxes and deductions. Yet you have little say on where your money is going. I mean, case in point, wouldn't it make sense for us to, I don't know, have universal health care if we're going to be losing 20 to 25% of our income in taxes and deductions? Like, why are we in 2023, about to be 2024 in less than two months, Still talking about not having universal health care. Why are we still talking about people being homeless in the so-called richest country in the world, yet everybody's living check to check? As much as we're giving away or losing, I should say, in our taxes and deductions, why are people going hungry? Shouldn't we all be eligible for EBT, food stamps? I mean, damn. Just think if we all could get, I don't know, $250 per adult. $150 per child under the age of 17, 18 and up, 250 and an adult. I mean, we make we sure do spend a lot of our tax dollars to not benefit us. I mean, shit. Arguably, and I'm going to keep saying it. Why are we paying taxes when it doesn't benefit us? And see, this is the problem with capitalism. I'm going to keep saying it. Capitalism has convinced us, right, that we're just supposed to be Working our lives away 24-7, 365, seven days a week, 52 weeks out the year, all 12 months to be broke. You're just supposed to work till you're dead. And then capitalism has convinced us that everything must have a cost. You know, I mean, you got to pay to live. You got to pay to play. And then the alcohol part is everything is going up and increasing in price around us. But you know what's not increasing? Your income, your hourly wage, your salary. Nope, you're still being paid the same damn low stagnant salaries and wages that you were being paid previous to COVID. I mean, seriously, when you look at a lot of these wages and salaries, case in point, in the USA, the federal minimum wage is still $7.25 per hour. And it's been the same federal minimum wage for, anybody want to take a guess? Anybody want to take a guess? For 14 years. Yes, yeah, since July of 2009. July 24th, 2009 to be exact. So, the whole myth of, well, if we raise everything, if we give you guys more money, everything else is going to go up. Honey, things have been going up. And our wages have been the same. And because the federal minimum wage is so low, that dictates how states decide how much they're going to pay people. Now, granted, a lot of states have made choices to raise their minimum wage. A lot of states' minimum wage is anywhere from 2 to 5 to $8 more than the federal minimum wage. But again, if your federal government is giving the signal that, hey, $7.25 an hour is enough. <laughs> you can see why states lollygag around having better pay. 
In the state of Michigan, they're raising the minimum wage in January 1st, 2024 to $10.33. And again, what the hell is $10.33 in 2024? What the hell is it now? I mean, my God, gas is back to being $3.49 per gallon for the lowest unleaded, 87 You're going to need more than $10 to get three gallons of gas. So I'm just trying to understand, like, you know, like, how are we coming up with this? Like, why are we okay with this? Why are we okay with our tax dollars funding wars and genocide? And keep in mind, in Israel, since we want to talk about Israel, in Israel, they have universal health care. And who's funding that universal health care? You, me, the American taxpayer. That's right, because the U.S. government annually is going to be gives Israel ten ten billion dollars a year. Now, mind you, they didn't gave them damn near a hundred billion dollars just in the past month or so with the ongoing war, aka genocide against the Palestinian people in Palestine. We're funding the war. We're funding the, you know, Israel defense, the IDF, on top of the fact that we're also funding Ukraine and their military. I mean, it's just, and again, they'll sit up here, the U.S. government will sit up here and tell all of us, oh, we don't have money for the child tax credit. We can't reinstate that because we don't have money. But we have money to miraculously be like, oh, here's 14 billion, here's 60 billion, here's 100 billion for war, for genocide, for crimes against humanity. But we don't have money to end homelessness in the USA. Oh, that's, we, that's too much money. But there's never enough money for war, murder, death, hell, and destruction. Oh, we are down to fund that with our tax dollars. Or I should say, the government is down to fund that with our tax dollars. Because once again, you, me, we don't have much say-so on where our money is going. I mean, shit, case in point, we can't do student loan forgiveness because that's too costly. But we sure as hell can do student loan war. Shit, if there's a war and we need students to go to that war, we can fund that. But we can't fund student loan forgiveness. We can't make college more affordable. We can't, you know, give you uh, child tax credit so we can help children and their parents and families not live in fucking poverty. But we sure as hell, if that kid needs to go to war, oh hell, we got you on that. Welcome to the USA, where you don't have a say, and they want to sit up here and make it seem like we have a democracy when we don't have a demo ancient democratic about the rich and the wealthy and the few in between making all of the choices and decisions. Meanwhile, the everyday working class, working poor, lower to low to moderate income people, which is the majority of the country, we're the ones that's working and providing the tax dollars. We don't get shit. All we do is get a swift kick in the face time and time again. And, um, you know, how dare we speak up and out about any of the shit that we're going through? You know, like, be, be happy that you're broke. Be happy that you have to live check to check. Be happy that every day is a constant struggle. You know, because it could be worse. Oh, it could be worse. But yes, I just wanted to say that because your tax dollars are funding airstrikes and drones, blowing up hospitals and ambulance in Palestine. Because apparently... All of the Palestinian people are also a part of Hamas. Yeah. It's sickening. It's disgusting. Innocent children, innocent men and women, innocent families, entire families, entire generations of people are being murdered and slaughtered by Israel. Funded by us, the U.S. taxpayers, through the U.S. government. And everybody's sitting around like, oh, it's, 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 you know, problems on both sides. Yeah. Bombing a fucking hospital is problems on both sides. Okay. 
You know, I'm just sick of this. And keep in mind, this is nothing new. This has been going on for decades. You can blame the United Nations for the bullshit idea that they decided that in the late 40s, it was okay to tell another group of people that had been massacred and slaughtered during the Holocaust by the Nazis in Germany and throughout that whole European sector, slaughtered them, and then to try to make amends, oh, we're going to give you land that already is occupied by another group of people. Well, who cares? Here's your place. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, I don't really get how anybody can truly sleep at night knowing what's going on, not only in this country, but around the world. I don't really get how people, like, where's your consciousness? And then what gets me is everyone keeps saying this is a holy war. So you mean to tell me the same God that all of these, you know, Abrahamic religions, Jewish, Muslim, Christianity, they all believe in the same God, okay? They're all Abrahamic religions, okay? So you mean to tell me the holy war fought over the same God that everybody supposedly believes and worships? Y'all going around killing God's children in the name of the same God? Like, come the hell on. And this is another reason why I'm going to keep saying it. In my opinion, religious people tend to be the biggest fucking hypocrites you will ever meet. I have yet to meet one who isn't, you know, <laughs> saying one thing and doing the exact opposite. Like, what the hell is going on? They'll sit up here and talk about Jesus, Jesus, this, God, this, God, that, and turn around and be justifying crimes against humanity, murdering and slaughtering entire communities and countries of people. Let's not even mention the ongoing genocide that's taking place in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. What's going on in Sudan, what's going on in the South Americas, what's going on in the USA, what's going on in Yemen, to Palestine, to the Ukraine, all over the globe, just killing folks, and then sitting up, constantly slaughtering people, and then talking about some, this is God's will. God's will is for people to be murdered and killed? God's will is for hospitals to be exploded and bombed? Really? I don't really think that's the type of will of a God that I want to worship. Just keeping it real. But you know, and then anytime anybody speaks up and out about this shit, somehow we're anti-Semitic because we don't agree with Israel bombing fucking hospitals? Okay. Shit is crazy. The shit is crazy. I'm just it's it's out of control, and I don't really get again how anybody can comfortably sleep at night knowing all of this mayhem is going on. And then here they are talking about, oh well, get ready for the 2024 presidential election. Meanwhile, people are living check to check. People don't know how they're gonna make ends meet. People don't know how they're going to keep a roof over their head. People don't know how they're going to keep food on the table. I mean, the national interest rates on mortgages are at fucking 8%. Again. But it's your fault. Remember that. It's your fault that you can't afford shit and you're living above your means, but yet they have billions of dollars to fund war. Remember that. Remember that. Okay? Your kids are going hungry. You got mass shootings all over the damn place because we can't pass common sense gun reform, gun control. Now, luckily, in the state of Michigan, under Governor Whitmer and, Gar and, and Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist II, we are passing common sense gun control. That's right. If you have a history of domestic violence, there's a restraining order against you. Guess what? You don't need to have access to a fucking gun. You're already a red flag. But of course, leave it up to the Republicans. And don't get me wrong. Republicans, Democrats, left wing, right wing, Still on the same dirty ass bird as a lot of us are seeing, right? 
Like, are there good people? Yes. But are there a lot of shitty people in these positions? Hell yes. And they are wrecking havoc. They're man, woman, person, folks, child. It's hard out here. People are dying. People are suffering. Something needs to give. This is not okay. I'm going to continue to speak up and out against the atrocities that are taking place in Palestine to the Palestinian people. I stand with Palestine. I stand with the Palestinians from the river to the sea, free Palestine. And I'm going to keep saying that because it's ridiculous. I don't understand how you can justify stealing people's land. Whoa, whoa. It's the U.S. way, ain't it? Because what happened to the USA? This is stolen land. I'm on stolen land. You're on stolen land. We are all on stolen land in the USA. This land was stolen by the Native Americans and the indigenous people. I mean, colonization, white supremacy, imperialism, allowing people to use religion to justify mass genocide and brutality. Not to mention what's going on with the LGBTQ plus community. We've been facing genocide and brutality our entire fucking life. When you look at what's going on when it comes to black people, African Americans, black Americans, Hispanic, Latinos, Native Americans, indigenous people, people of color, Asians, Pacific Islanders, etc. We've been facing genocide and brutality since the, since the beginning. It's, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. When you look at women and feminine people and girls, the sexism, the misogyny, the hatred of women, it's ridiculous. Gun violence is all over the place. Every time you turn around, you gotta work. You can't go bowling, you can't go to church, you can't go to the movies, you can't go to Walmart, you can't go nowhere without having to worry about getting your, getting your damn brain blown out because somebody has decided that, hey, I'm having a bad day, so you're going to have a bad day. Pow, pow. It's ridiculous. Every day, you know, you, you don't know what you're walking into. We're literally on high alert everywhere we go because we have to worry about constant chaos and mayhem. 